Good morning. Coming to you from New York City, from the headquarters of where? Fora. Wait, can you see my, my sweatshirt here? At Fora, we are the modern travel agency. We are here to help you in your process in becoming a travel advisor. I have been a travel advisor for decades but we are here to help people who would like to become travel advisors have what we believe is a pretty straightforward path into learning about the travel industry, learning about becoming a travel advisor, and building your own business, helping you engage in your own individual entrepreneurship. We are here for all of those things. And this destination debrief, which we do every Friday, is one of the ways that we support you in your process of becoming a travel advisor. Why? Because we're giving you intelligence into a destination that you may or may not know. If you know it a little bit, you may go a little bit deeper. If you didn't know anything about it, you may be able to sell it to a client. It's one of many trainings that we do here at Fora every single week. I think we do about 40 hours of training, something in that range. And destination debriefs actually were our foundational training. Henley and I, Henley, our co-founder, started doing them very soon after we founded Fora. And to us, there's still a really important piece of the puzzle for our advisors becoming really great travel advisors and something that we're really passionate about. So happy you guys can all be here with us today to talk about the Dominican Republic. And now we will get started. So what we will cover today, this is what I always call a table of contents. Those of you who are advisors who are on this call know that this deck will live in Portal. For those of you who are not our advisors, Portal is our source of truth. It is how our advisors sell hotels. It is where they store their commission information, how they get paid, their clients. And it's also where we store all of our training materials and our marketing materials. So this deck will live in Portal, and you can access it at any time. So you can feel free to take exhaustive notes, but you can always go back and re-watch this and look at this deck because there's great information in it that I probably won't even get a chance to talk about. This lives there. This is the table of contents. It's also what we're going to talk about a little bit today. These are marketing materials. Now, everyone who's on this call will get an email with these. People who are not know that these are just some of the marketing materials that we provide to our advisors so that they can engage with their personal network and build their own book of business. So these are really great for after you sit through and engage with this destination debrief, reaching out to your clients and saying, hey, I just learned all about the Dominican Republic and I think it'd be a great destination for you. Here's some materials or just sending out some great marketing materials to your network in general, any of those things. And this is just part of how we support all of our advisors with marketing in addition to education. So now we will talk about the Dominican Republic. Why the Dominican Republic? The Dominican Republic is in the Caribbean. It goes a little bit deeper than some of the other islands in the Caribbean. So some of the islands have sort of singular experience in the Caribbean. There's only beach. You know, there's really not very much hiking. So you're sort of there for like fly and flop, or you're there for boating or water experiences. The Dominican Republic, you actually can dig a little bit deeper. It has sort of a third dimension to it. It is a quite a big island. It's, of course, on the island of Hispaniola. Part of it is part of Haiti, but it still is just the Dominican Republic part is still quite large, larger than most of the islands in the Caribbean. And so it really offers a lot of experiences for clients um, and travelers. Um, you can do though great very simple things in the Dominican Republic and we talk about a lot of a lot of that but also for the client who wants to go a little bit deeper also great flights so what we call lift it means there's a lot of really great ways to get there nonstop a lot of people who are going on vacations particularly people who are families and they have kids and they're juggling you know doing a connection can be really difficult to negotiate when you have little kids and luggage and everything else, but it also means that you are opening yourself up for delays, missed flights, all of that other kind of stuff. The Dominican Republic has great lift, a lot of direct flights from a lot of cities that might not have direct flights to any place else in the Caribbean, which means that it's often a first stop or someplace that people look at. Another thing that I'm going to add here is, I think I will talk about quickly because I don't think we have a, a slide on it, is all-inclusives. 
all inclusives do not exist in the universe everywhere. There are places where all inclusives are are sort of focused on. One is the Dominican Republic, another is Jamaica, another is Mexico. If you have a client who comes to you and says, I want to do an all inclusive, but I don't want to go to the Dominican Jamaica or Mexico, you might want to temper their expectations. You can find all inclusives other places, but that's where the majority of them are going to live. And there's really, really great ones in the Dominican Republic from the really luxury end to much, much more affordable. And that's a great option again for clients who really just want to go relax, not think about anything else. The advantage of an all-inclusive is that food is included, generally some kind of alcohol is included, activities included, except for maybe um, motor, boat sports, that kind of thing. So it is great for families, for multi-gen, for groups of friends traveling together who don't want to worry about splitting bills, all of that stuff. It's a great option and a great opportunity to really be able to sell here. Clients to book here. Really tons of family stuff. It is a great, great spot for families. You can also, of course, do, we've had clients do weddings here. We have had honeymoons here, really everything. Because it's such a bigger island, it has three major airports, for instance, and there's different areas, you might want to look at where you are sending your client for the experience. You might also want to look at what the client wants to engage with. If they're fine just sitting on the beach, one area, if they're, you know, want to do hiking. There might be another area. There's surfing as well. So lots of different opportunities here. Really, you could send any client here, but you might want to look at where exactly you're sending them to be sure that that location or that hotel is going to be servicing what the client's interests are, but really a great place for everyone. How long to stay? Definitely sort of a five to seven night, I think is perfect. You could do a four day long weekend. If you have one of those flights that is a nonstop, Always check the schedule, make sure that the flights go every day and that you're not scheduling something when they can't fly direct. But I would say you could do a long weekend. It is a little bit on the far side for that, but definitely an option. But really, if you want to have a vacation, enjoy it five to seven nights is going to be absolutely perfect here in the Dominican Republic, where you're really going to just enjoy beach, relaxation, maybe some hiking, maybe some surfing, some fun stuff. Location and getting there. Here we have two of their major airports, but there are some other airports here as well. Again, back to Lyft. If your client's priority is a nonstop, please look into the flights before you start looking into hotels because it is a small enough island that you can drive really around the whole thing. Much like if you have ever been to Haiti, the name Haiti actually means land of mountains or something close to that. I might have it slightly wrong. The Dominican Republic, of course, same island, shares a lot of the same landscapes. It is very hilly and the roads are very windy and they are sort of like not all the best roads. So you do want to be aware of that. And if your clients are priority or a direct flight in, you want to make sure that you're looking then where the flight is coming into and that you're looking at properties that are going to be, say, within an hour of that. You can fly into another airport and drive two hours or three hours to get to someplace that's a little bit farther. It could be a rougher drive, though. So I always want to prioritize that because I do think the Dominican Republic is one place where you might want to make your decisions about location based upon, if if your clients are very open, you might want to look at the flights and then decide on which property versus other Caribbean islands, which only have one airport. And so you're really going to look at their hotel first and then worry about the flights. Population 11 million. Another thing that's different about the Dominican Republic is that it does have a very big population of people who live there. Um, Not just there's a few expats, but really, you know, people were born there, grew up there, big baseball culture. So it is a great place for somebody who wants to engage with local culture because there are local restaurants. There's all that kind of great stuff happening. So for somebody who wants to dig a little bit deeper than maybe they feel they can and in some of the other Caribbean islands, Dominican Republic is a great option. Transportation, honestly, pretty easy to get around. Private cars and VIP shuttles, almost all the hotels are going to be able to help you with arrival transfers. If you're in Santo Domingo, and many people don't get to Santo Domingo, it's safe walking around in Zona Colonial, you know, pretty safe throughout. All kinds of stuff you can do here. Of course, boat experiences on the outside, but um, pretty easy to get around. But you just do need to think about airports, where they're located, and hotels. When to visit, as with most of the Caribbean, certainly not the ABC or the um, islands that are out of the hurricane zone, but uh, the best time is December through May in terms of weather. Summer is the hurricane season. 
It's not a bad time to visit. It's going to be warmer. It's going to be a little bit of rain. Could be, you know, sometimes a little bit buggy, but great opportunity if you have somebody who really is a little bit more budget savvy, because this is going to be the time when they have a great opportunity to get some really good deals and maybe stay at hotels that generally they couldn't afford during the high season and have that really like luxury experience. Most everything in the Dominican Republic is open year round. Some of the other islands, like say St. Bart's, is, are you know really closed down. But the Dominican Republic, because there is a local population and it really is an island where lots of people live, just about everything stays open year round. So it gives you more opportunities for better bargains during the off season that are going to feel still like there's a lot of activity and things going on. Winter, of course, December to March is the most popular time to visit. And that's when you're going to see the highest prices. And good point. Why are we talking about the Dominican Republic today? We're actually moving into a season where you are probably, as a travel advisor, going to have a lot of opportunities to sell it. Because now, as we celebrate the first cold day yesterday in New York, my first day wearing a coat, you're going to start to have people say, hey, I actually really want to go away at festive season, which is what we call Christmas and New Year's, that period, and realize like I really want to go someplace sunny and warm because it's starting to get cold here. Or February break coming up or President's Day or spring breaks, all of those things are about to start ticking into clients' radar. And so you really need to be responsive and come up with great ideas right away. And the Dominican Republic, of course, is a fantastic one. What is new and noteworthy? So the top hotels that we book in the Dominican Republic are here. Casa de Campo, fantastic, very classic here. I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes. Finest Punta Cana is an all-inclusive, like we were talking about. Club Med Michis Playa Esmeralda, our co-founder, Jake stayed here recently, absolutely loved it. And I think we're talking about this in a few minutes, and I'll tell you why that's special. Hyatt Ziva Capcana. If you don't know the Hyatt all-inclusives, they're Ziva and uh, Zalara. Ziva is family. Zalara is adult. I think I have that correct. Double check me. And that is a fantastic, fantastic all-inclusive brand. They do have them in Jamaica. They have them here. They do have them in Mexico. So one, always to think about, they hit a great price point and they are a fantastic experience. And Club Med Punta Cana, again, the Club Meds are also all-inclusives. Club Med Punta Cana is a great family resort and it is at a slightly lower price point than the Michis Playa Esmeralda. The Michis Playa Esmeralda is truly, truly very special. What coming a Wyndham. So this is probably going to be a little bit more of a budget-friendly, all-inclusive. Zemi Meaches, this is going to be maybe a little bit more of an uptick. And then, of course, St. Regis Capcana is going to be at the luxury end. So love these three because you can really see just from these what's coming, how there is a variety of price points in the Dominican Republic. So more budget-friendly travelers and luxury travelers as well. Dominican Republic 101. Do, do, do. I always say we need the little beep like from the old day slideshows. Again, this is a big island. It is hours to drive across it. I think it's like from tip to tip, it's about four hours or whatever through like mountainous roads. And I could be off on my timing, but you want to make sure, again, you are connecting your client with the right sort of experience. And also you want to make sure that you're flying into the right place. So you have the North Coast, which is Puerto Plata. Up there is where you're going to be doing more adventure stuff. The beach is up there. There is kite surfing up there. Um, you can do snorkeling, deep sea fishing, diving, all of that kind of great stuff. Stuff. This is for the client who wants that little bit more isolated, a little bit less resort feel, a little bit more adventure. The Southeast, which is Punta Cana and La Romana, this is where you're going to find the luxury resorts. This is where you're going to have golfing, you're going to have that fly and flop where you just like fly and then you just relax at the resort. Beaches, yachting, all of that kind of great stuff. Lots of restaurant opportunities, all of that. Peninsula of Samana, this is where there's a national park. There's not going to be as many resorts. It's really very sort of isolated. There's kayaking. You know, this is for the client who really wants to get away from the sort of like resort environment and engage in a more natural, isolated sort of feeling. Uh, and then Zona Colonial, Santo Domingo. Santo Domingo is a really interesting city. It does have some interesting touring that you can do there and going around. Unlike other places, other Caribbean islands, that you don't actually, most people never go to the capital. You don't, most flights don't go into Santo Domingo. You can fly to Santo Domingo and then you can travel to some of the resorts, but that is, is a special place and most people actually don't get to Santo Domingo. So just interesting to know that it's there. And if you have a client who wants to engage with the culture a little bit more, then you might want to include that as a stop. 
The benefits of working with a DMC. So normally in the Caribbean, we don't work with a DMC unless the DMC can also act as a bit of a wholesaler for resorts. In this case, you might want to work with a DMC in the Dominican Republic because there is such a wide variety of experiences to have here. And you may not even know how deep you can go with cultural experiences or with eco experiences or with adventure experiences or with nature related experiences. All of these are things a DMC is really going to be able to work with you on and tell you about and also create the best experience for your client when you do have so much variety out there. So I would work with a DMC, maybe not if you just have a client who really wants to go to like a club med, sit there, have their kids taken care of, you know, sip on margaritas and just chill and relax and read a book, then you probably don't need a DMC. If you have a client who's looking to, you know, make a couple of stops, engage in some like ecotourism or some adventure tourism, go a little bit beyond and see what else there is to see in the Dominican Republic or engage on a more cultural level, 100% I would work with a DMC. You might also want to work with a DMC if you have something like a large multi-gen or if you have a wedding where you need a little bit of extra support, you need to arrange transfers, you have people who want to do day trips. All of those things are reasons why you might want to engage with a DMC here. Back to the groups there, because DMCs, one of the things they do offer is logistical coordination, but also 24-7 support. So for instance, if you had a group for a wedding and they weren't just sort of going in and like staying at one all-inclusive and nobody was touching them again, but they wanted to do excursions and you need to arrange transfers and all of that stuff, a DMC is a great asset to have because then you don't have individuals calling you when there's an issue or a question, but they have the DMC on site to handle that. So the other thing that I will say is that some of the airports can be a little, particularly Santo Domingo, can be a little bit bit um, hectic in the Dominican Republic. So it's good to set up an arrival transfer so clients can get through that and then can come out and just have a really nice, very calm transfer to their to their resort or wherever they're going so that they can start their trip off on a positive note and not feel very stressed by airports. Okay. So let's talk about Casa de Campo. Casa de Campo is I think maybe the best known, maybe not the best known. I don't know. For me, it is the classic experience in the Dominican Republic. It is a beautiful, old school, gentle, luxury, you know, wonderful place to be and really has something for everyone. So they have mentions golf here, the, you know, beach, they have uh, pools, everything you could want to do. So this is really a lovely place if you just had a couple and they wanted to really just go off and have like a beautiful like couple experience 100% here if you have a whole big family and the kids are active and everybody's active and you want them to have a great time absolutely here one of the things that Casa de Campo offers as well are their villas which are lovely and they also mean that you can accommodate larger groups so with whether it's a larger family that wants to be all together, or if it's a multi-gen family or even groups of friends, do look at Casa de Campo and check out their villas. It is a great opportunity here to engage with that. But this is just a really very special place. I find that I often get the question for people, I've stayed at Casa de Campo. I want to go back to the Dominican Republic and um, stay you know, someplace else like that, that experience. Where could I go? Because they want to repeat it and have it be, you know, similar, but have a new experience. And there's really nothing else like Casa de Campo. If you have a client who loved this experience and they want to go back, but they want to have something different, they're not going to have the same experience. This is a very special place. And the experiences here are very individual. So I would say this is something that is, you know, everybody loves it, but it's very special. And particularly here, I would say if somebody loves it, just keep sending them back. I know, I know it's hard. People like to try new things, but when you find what you like, Hyatt Ziva Capcana. We talked about this very quickly. We being I using the Royal, we know, uh-oh. This is, if you don't know, if you have clients who are interested in all inclusives, make sure you know the Ziva and Zalara brands. Um, Hyatt Ziva Capcana is really luxury but for families. So this is the parents really want to relax, but they want the kids active. They want them doing stuff. They want to just be able to have a great time as a family, but have a little bit of independence. I personally like all inclusives when you have kids, whether they be young or teens, because you are not having a heart attack every time they want to order a pizza and then they have two bites of it and then they run off. It's like, okay, that's fine. No problem. And you're not paying, you know, $50 for a grilled cheese. Sometimes when you look at all-inclusives, th there was a rumor for a long time that all-inclusives were cheap. 
all inclusives are generally not cheap, but they're great value because you do have everything included. So what I also love it for is, you know, when you have a family and they want to go away and they really want to budget, there's sometimes you go to a luxury hotel and you're like, oh, that hotel is so much less expensive than this all-inclusive. Is it really though, when you start adding in all of the things that you're paying for, particularly if you have a large family or you have a family of five, like I do, an all-inclusive, you can kind of like, it's one bill, you know, you've done it and you're done, your budget, everything. So It is an interesting option to think about for families when they really just want to go away and relax because they don't have to have that piece of like every meal being like, oh, no, you can't order two entrees. You can. You can do whatever you want. So really a lot of fun. This is where I would go if you have, you know, family who just wants to enjoy. You can see it's got this really pretty sort of contemporary design. All of these are fairly new in the last 10 years or so. So it's contemporary, lovely, feels very fresh, um, a great opportunity for families. The Club Med Punta Cana, this is sort of a classic here. Just to touch on the Club Med brand quickly, Club Med for many Americans for a long time had a little bit of a party vibe reputation. There was one in Florida that was quite famous. Club Med has, they haven't rebranded, but they have readjusted their orientation. It's still the same brand. It's still Club Med for families. It is now an exceptionally family-friendly, family-focused brand. Now, the interesting thing about Club Med, Club Med stands for Club Mediterranean, is that Europeans, it's much beloved amongst Europeans. And Europeans know it very well. Europeans, Club Med is where they went as kids. It's very family-oriented. There's a ton of Club Med in Europe that are beloved by Europeans. Americans still have a tendency to not know the brand as well, but it is sort of the classic for family, all-inclusive at a high end. So generally the club meds are usually a little bit on the luxury side. Again, this is the little bit more affordable one because here in the Dominican Republic, there are two. So you can see the design is really that lovely beach design. I love when they have the like sort of white floors and this clean design in beach properties because it feels very in keeping, but with a nice contemporary vibe to it. Um, Wellness focus here is great. They do some really fun stuff here for kids because again, Club Med does families really, really well. That's their focus. So they have creative by Cirque du Soleil. They have all kinds of great stuff for kids. And then they also have a great spa. So this is a really amazing option. This is its upticked sister, brother, Club Med I'm not sure how old this is. I think this one is only about five years old, maybe even four years old. This is the Uber luxury spot. This also, by the way, is where you want to go. Club Med in general, you want to go here if you have really young kids because Club Med does do nannies and childcare for kids under four. That's very unusual in the all-inclusive space. Most all-inclusives and hotels in general start their kids clubs at four years old. Club Med has childcare and nanny service under four. So this is why Jake ended up at Club Med because he has two very young twins and a third who's only a year older than them. And so it was really important to him that he was able to have childcare for them. And he did. His family had a fantastic time. It was beautiful. Another thing I want to mention quickly, if you've been on any of these destination debriefs with us, you will notice the slides. I'm going to go back to this normally have four perks down at the bottom. These don't. Why don't they? Because all inclusives, even though that's an all inclusive, we still include the Hyatt perks on there. But all inclusives, it's very hard to include perks at all inclusives. Why? Because the perks we normally include are breakfast daily. Okay, breakfast is included. A resort credit. It's kind of hard to use a resort credit when everything is included. So all inclusives don't generally have the same perks packages that other properties do. There's not anything wrong with that. It just means that it's a little bit different. And if you want to do something special for your clients, sometimes you have to get a little bit more creative to see what you could include as a special perk for them if you wanted to thank them for being your client or send them something special. So just something to think about. But again, back to Club Med Meaches Playa Esmeralda. I wish these guys would have shorter names. This is just a really fantastic, really luxury, upticked experience, particularly for somebody who's got like young kids or active kids and really wants this lovely beach experience. Excellence Punta Cana. We do great with the Excellence brand. Again, here you won't see any perks because this is an all-inclusive. It is adults only. It is serene. This is going to be chill. I will, again, pause and discuss all-inclusives in general. All-inclusives are generally in two buckets. They're either adults only or they're families. 
It's not that there's no in between. If you wanted to go to the Club Med Meaches Playa Esmeralda that we were just talking about and you were a couple, you would have a wonderful, fantastic time. However, there's going to be kids around. You're going to see kids. There's going to be family activities and all that stuff happening around you. It might be off to the side. You might not be participating in it, but you will see it. The adults only ones are great if you really want to break away and you just don't want to have to see any kids, whether you are a couple who are parents who are traveling without your kids. I know sometimes when as a parent, when I'm traveling without my kids, it's like I don't necessarily want to deal with other people's kids. Or if you have honeymooners or if you have younger couples who don't want to engage in that. So it's a different vibe. This, I think, is, it sums it up really well. Adults only, serene vibe. There's not going to be a lot of that frantic energy that you might have with a family-friendly resort, which, again, some people are going to totally vibe with. So this is a great opportunity to engage with that. It has swim-up seat suites. I love swim-up seat suites. I think they're so fun. I'm also going to mention under the Sandals brand, you have Sandals, which is adult only, and you have Beaches, which is family friendly. A lot of these fall under those double, have two brands under their branding. Okay, so this you've probably never heard of before. This is the Ani Dominican Republic. Ani only, I believe, has two properties, this one and one in Thailand. I could be slightly wrong about that. And it is the personal passion project of someone who's really culturally engaged in the Dominican Republic and does a lot of giving back and does a lot of great things there. This is a single use, which sounds like you throw it away afterwards, but isn't it? Just means it's a single rental unit. It has, I think, nine bedrooms. I could be slightly off on the bedroom, so double check me that sometime around 10 bedrooms though. And this is individual use. So this is for a multi-gen family, again, group of friends, anything like that who want to travel. They want to be all together. They want to stay in one place, have activities together, but they don't want to be in a hotel environment or they don't want like all of the you know stuff happening around them. They want something a little bit more curated just for them. And it is beautiful. It's stunning. Henley Estate here. It is gorgeous. You can see its location right here. This is some place where you can do like kayaking. You can go out and do some hiking in the forest and green areas, and you can also be out in the water. All all kinds of opportunities here to engage on a deeper level. It's just a really, really beautiful spot and a really thoughtfully done hotel so that you can have all the services of a hotel, but really have an um, individual experience for your clients. So very, very special. I will say I'm not the biggest fan of freestanding villas or, you know, freestanding villas uh, if they're not related to a hotel. Why? Because there's no consistency of service and the individual owners can pull availability at the last minute and can do all kinds of things that make our lives really difficult. So anything that falls under like, you know, the VRBO or any of the villa rentals and all of that, it's a lovely idea. I find as a travel advisor, they're often a little bit difficult to manage because again, you are always at the mercy of an owner. This is completely different. This is a hotel. It's just a single use hotel or for use by one group. And so that for me changes the dynamic. It makes it much easier to work with because this is really a solid product that you can know is going to have the level of service and there's not going to be somebody pulling the inventory out or anything like that. So for me, I always kind of look towards that, but this is just a really, really special spot. And I would absolutely think about this for your high-end clients who want just this like very private luxury experience. Also, in the Dominican Republic, did you know there is an almond resort? If you don't know the almond resorts, the almond resorts are sort of the, um, you know, the granddaddy of resorts, the creme de la creme, the sort of highest level of resort experiences. There are now city almonds, famously here in New York City and in Tokyo and a few other cities. The almonds started in Thailand, the almond puri, um, back in the light, late 1980s, and then we're in Bali. Their service um, and their serene aesthetic were born in those places and carry throughout all of their properties. So this is, if you don't know Amon, please take a few minutes, check them out. It's a very, very special brand. It is generally very, very expensive to stay there because all of their properties have very few rooms. They're all, I think they're just, except for maybe some of the city ones, they're all sort of under 50 rooms and they're all very luxury. The Amon Yara, for instance, in Turks and Caicos is a favorite of ours. It is a beautiful, beautiful experience. Most people don't know 
know that there's one in the Dominican Republic, and it is as stunning as all of the other ones, and usually prices slightly lower than many of the other ones, just because it's a little bit, it's not so difficult to get to, but it's a little bit more difficult to get to. And many people don't think of the Dominican Republic as having this level of luxury. So I just think it's a little bit of an overlooked gem that I did want to bring up um, when we were talking about it, because I think it's an opportunity to show your expertise in an area to give your clients an option if they're looking for that kind of luxury experience and they want to have something that's super special. So if you had, for instance, honeymooners who wanted a really special experience, maybe they don't have the budget for the Amanara on Turks and Caicos, but they might have the budget for the Amanara here in the Dominican Republic. And it's going to be the same level of luxury, the same level of service. And and with amazing experiences that you can build in there for them as well, including nearby surfing, kayaking, all kinds of great stuff that you can do here. It's very near where the Ani is. So a very special spot and frequently overlooked. So I did want to bring that up. We like to talk to our advisors before we do these so that we can get their feedback. And I love this because somebody brought up actually one of my favorites, Casa de la XVI, which is what number? 16. Yay. Which is a amazing. It's now a collection. It actually started, it, it started smaller. It started as like two homes. Now it's built out a little bit in Santo Domingo's um, Zona Colonial. I've had a lot of clients at this property who are um, going to do some little bit different, more adventurous things around the Dominican Republic and have started in Santo Domingo. And it is a favorite by all. It feels very much of place as if you were staying in your um, perhaps very wealthy, but very local friend who lives in Santo Domingo. Really a special spot. And if you are going to Santo Domingo for any reason or your clients are stopping there, I would highly recommend this as an option. Eden Rock Cap Canna. This is a Relay and Chateau. Relay and Chateau. Any Relay and Chateau property has got an element of gastronomy. That's how they get to be Relay and Chateau. So this is an amazing all-inclusive option for clients who are really looking for an upticked food experience along with the all-inclusiveness. So I would do this for couples. I would also do this for families who just, you know, are kind of a little bit more foodies and are interested in engaging with that. Excellence El Carmen. We talked about another excellence. Here's more. There are multiple ones in these destinations, but this is one that's got, as you can see, 23 pools. What? How could that be? I swear. Look at it. So just gives you another option in this area for a great all-inclusive experience. Finest Punta Cana. I mentioned this one of our biggest sellers. This is just sort of one of those ones that ticks all the boxes. Family-friendly, great price point all-inclusive, range of things to do. It's just going to be a great, well-rounded one. Hard Rock Punta Cana. Hard Rock built itself out, and it's a little like, wait, what? It is a, actually a great all-inclusive brand. People love this property. I have to say, we have had multiple advisors who have had clients who have gone to the Hard Rock for a wedding and then have scheduled their own weddings there, which I think speaks to how good it is. For me, it's always a little bit difficult to break away from the concept of the hard rock as being the seminal one in Florida with the great big guitar. That's the first thing that pops to my mind. So I would say anytime you're looking at one of these, please look at the website of the hard rock put to content. You'll see it's a perfectly lovely beach resort. There is no massive guitar or anything like that shining into the sky. It is just a great solid brand of all inclusives. Again, price is at a lower price point. So this is for somebody who's looking for a very big experience but has a, you know, is a little bit budget friendly. One thing I'm going to touch on quickly about all inclusives in general, there are really very, none to very few boutique all inclusives. Why? If you manage the scale of the economy for an all inclusive, they need to provide food for everyone and, you know, all the time and all of these other things. You can really only do that if you have a larger property. So most all inclusives are going to be big. It is unusual. I'm thinking of some in like Cabo where what they've done is created a boutique section within a larger all-inclusive. That sometimes happens. But for the most part, all-inclusives are going to be larger. I mentioned the Eden Rock. That's actually a smaller one. That one is about, I think it's just under 100 rooms. So that's really special when you find one that is a little bit smaller. And that is something if you have somebody who says that they're a little bit nervous about being someplace too big, do check out room numbers or keys, we sometimes call them, to see how many there are because 
some of these, like the Hard Rock, that is a very, very large resort. If you have somebody who finds that intimidating, then that might not be a good fit for them. The Sublime, Sun, Sub, Sublime, Sublime Samana Hotel and Residence. This is a little bit more about private villas. Really, really lovely. I would I would call this having a boutique feel, the Sublime properties. Tortuga Bay, another one. I would say this one is like... Casa de Campo, like the Amon and the Ani, this one is at a luxury level. This one is a super special experience. Really, really, everyone I ever know who has been here has absolutely loved this. So if you have clients who are at the really high end and they want to, to go to the Dominican Republic, those are the properties that I might focus on and take a look at. This one, as it says, designed by Oscar de la Renta. This is just a very, very cool property. Again, part of Virtuoso. So has all the Virtuoso perks, but someplace very, very special. Take a look at those if you have luxury clients. What to do? We've kind of already probably tackled this, but the Dominican Republic, depending on where you go, is going to be about either just sitting on the beach, doing beachy things, all of the good beachy stuff, beach volleyball, sure, why not? Relaxing by the pool, reading a book, just very much chilling out. You can do whale watching. It's a limited season. Um, If you're there when it happens, great to go out and take a look at that. All other kinds of stuff that can happen there, I think we've really talked about, but depending on where you are, the hiking, you can do um, any water activities from kayaking, from kite surfing, from actual surfing. There's motorsports. There are, I don't know, it's just a great Caribbean destination and really whatever you can, you can imagine doing there. Oh, we haven't talked about rum and cigars at all. So thank you for reminding me what to do continued. Rum, very popular in the Dominican Republic. So you can do rum tastings, any kind of experience around rum. Also cigars, the cigars from the Dominican Republic, generally the Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, and Cuba fight for whose cigars are best. So you can do cigar rolling experiences where you learn how to roll them. You can just do learn about cigar smoking, the right way to smoke them, all of those kinds of experiences. So that's super fun if you wanted to do, you know, a bachelor party or a bachelorette party or something around those experiences. Again, all inclusives, I think, are great for bachelor and bachelorette parties because you're not like looking down the table and saying, oh, she always orders a whole bottle of wine and he never drinks anything. And now they have to split the bill and everybody's mad. So great opportunity there. Again, cultural history in Santo Domingo, biking, Segway tours, horseback riding. Again, because the Dominican Republic is so large, there is just a wide variety of stuff you can engage with. Here we go over all of the different beaches. I'm not going to really drill down into these individually, but this is a little bit about all of the opportunities that are available and how each one of them is very different. Restaurants in the Dominican Republic, super great food here. And these are some that our local advisors and some of our advisors who have traveled there have recommended. Emmanuel, I know you're out there and listening to me and you're probably saying all the things I'm doing wrong. Apologies ahead of time. But these are great restaurants that if you're in any of these areas, you should 100% engage with. Um, Stuff you need to know, these are classic dishes that you might find here in the Dominican Republic. You can take a look at that. Dress code, it's very casual. It's the Caribbean. You always want to make sure that you are dressed for the weather. If you're there in the middle of the summer, it's going to be very hot. There might be a little bit of rain. If you're there in the winter, you're going to want to have sweaters and everything for at night when it might get a little bit cooler with the air off the water, but just really very casual. It's all about being comfortable and living your best, living your best self. Respect local customs. Always respect local customs wherever you are. Saying hello or good day is always welcome. The Dominican Republic is generally safe for tourists. I would always, in any tourist area, use your common sense and be mindful of your belongings. You know, be careful that you have everything where it should be. Keep your valuables in your hotel safe. Don't be showy. Don't bring out large wads of cash or a lot of very showy jewelry. I would say that to anyone traveling anywhere, though. So for me, these are really just common sense precautions. There, There is an official currency in the Dominican Republic. It is the Dominican peso, but you're generally going to be using U.S. dollars anywhere that you're going. If you want to have some small um, pesos on you for tipping, that's always welcome. Um, and credit cards are accepted pretty much across the board. You want to avoid drinking uh, the water and beach safety. You know, beach safety, always be careful near the water. Water's our friend, and yet it cannot be our friend anymore. 
There are upscale beach clubs. If you want to go beyond where you're staying, you can do day passes. That's about the kind of experience you want. You don't have to. I think most of the hotels have be pretty well taken care of, but you can have that experience if you want to go out beyond. And again, we're talking about the rum and tobacco here, which we love. I didn't even know about this Godfather situation. And Rhea actually was like, oh, should we include the hotel that the Godfather was filming at? We didn't include it because it's not one that we've actually sold very much. But these are some great fun ones to watch if you were going to do a trip and you wanted to kind of like get prepared and get excited for what you're going to see. Of course, you could watch Pirates of the Caribbean and then reenact the entire thing. And books. I love this books. I had no idea. I did read The Brief and Wondrous Life of Oscar Wow. And didn't know that took place in the DR, but the rest of them I didn't. But here are some cultural events and celebrations. If you have clients traveling during any of these periods, it might be great to just let them know about this so that they might want to engage. And day trips, these are day trips that you could do from different resorts, depending on where the resort is. All really wonderful for the clients who want to engage at a deeper level. And if you we're not going to the Dominican Republic. Where would you go? Again, Jamaica and Cancun. Why? Because those are really rich in all-inclusive experiences, and the Dominican Republic is really rich in all-inclusive experiences. So those are the three. If you have clients who say, I loved my all-inclusive in Jamaica, where can I go next? These are the ones that you want to look at. Bali, Indonesia. I bring this one up because it's got beach, it's got mountain, it got all the stuff in one place. So might be a slightly different client, maybe a more adventurous client, but maybe not. I actually have clients who have done both and enjoyed both. So wanted to bring that up. And Phuket, Thailand. Phuket, again, it's got some sort of middle bits and culturally bits, and then it's got the beachy bits. So it offers a little bit of both, which sometimes is very hard to find. All right. We are right at time. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. To all of our four advisors, it was wonderful to spend time with you all. To all the people who are thinking of becoming four advisors, we hope you join us. And then we can see you again on another Destination Debrief. Thank you, everybody. And we'll see you all soon. Have a great weekend. Oh,